Is anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. Fairbridge Farm in Western Australia, and I have with me Kerry. Um, Kerry, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, you know, um, we, we had a bit of a discussion before you can feel things. Sometimes I feel things, see things, hear things, or even know things. Okay, okay. What's your feeling about this house? Um, at the moment, it feels very settled, mm -hmm. very comfortable, uh, but in a couple of rooms, um, it does feel very uneasy where people have been strapped down. In here? Upstairs. Okay. <laughs> I'd only just met Kerry a few hours earlier, and she was a friend of my mate Paul. She had told me that she was sensitive to things of a paranormal nature, and I decided to invite her for a walkthrough of the house with me. To be honest, I did not know what to expect. Someone with or without alleged psychic ability is pretty much the same to me. I was determined to keep an open mind and see whether the addition of a sensitive person would provoke a paranormal response walking through the house. Clive House is one of many cottages at Fairbridge Farm and was built in 1921. It was used as a girl's cottage to house orphans who were brought over from England. There is a great deal of controversy about this place and there were allegations of systemic sexual and physical abuse perpetrated against the children by those charged with their care. There has been at least one documented death at the cottage, and it is reputed to be one of the more haunted buildings at Fairbridge Farm. The air feels thicker in here. It does? Yes. Okay. It's um, heavy. Mm. Harder to breathe. I mean, do you feel something within your body, or is it something that you just kind of... I feel it in my body. Okay. Okay. That, that doesn't bode well for the rest of the walk. <laughs> All right. Now, this is just the, the kitchen area of Clive House. Now, I've heard a lot of stories about Clive House of people getting touched, um, mostly noises. Ooh, gotta be really careful because I'm almost tripping the chair. So, we've just been in here before, kind of having our food and, and meals, and you felt quite at ease here, it seemed. Uh, um, after a while I felt at ease, but when I first got here, yeah. uh, sitting on the end chair near the fridge, I kept feeling a cold breeze brushed past my right side, okay. and it kept feeling like someone was touching me in my back, right. tickling the back of my arm. What kind of touch? Like someone was trying to get my attention, just tickling me a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Right, I just hope I do not get touched tonight because I'll be sleeping. It wasn't um, a negative feel. It, it wasn't a negative no. feel, okay. Um, being the macho man that I am, <laughs> I am going to take point. Um, it's a little bit dark in here right now, so you can't see a lot. There's a door that's right there, um, and just kind of bags on the floor. You know, one thing that I know about this this place here is that it's actually very narrow. It's you know, it's not kind of wide at all. Yeah. And, uh, and in fact, I can't see anything but what's on my screen, so I'm just going to look more carefully. And what what we have here is a, a bunch of corridors, bathrooms and toilets, and behind me another bathroom. Okay. Um, I, that door opened by itself. I just realised it was your hand. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I'm a little bit jumpy because of all the stories that I've heard of this place. So it's a toilet, nothing really. Ooh. Okay, anything, anything in here? Not that I'm feeling. No. Not that you're feeling at all. Do, do, do you the find? The more I move behind you, I'm feeling heat in my left arm. What? Why? Heat in my left arm. It could be pressure where someone may have um, been too rough with somebody. 
Okay. And I'm actually feeling the pain of somebody else's arm. In here? Yes. Okay. So a lot, it sounds like a lot of what you're talking about is very residual. Yes. Like nothing like active as in like a, a spirit like walking, but just the stuff that you feel. Okay. So all the way up here is a staircase that leads all the way up. So everything here is wooden, yeah? Yes. So, okay. So, um, can you see where I'm at? Yes, right. we'll be. Okay, all right, so there's steps up here. I'm gonna slowly make my way up. This very narrow, I wouldn't say rickety, but very narrow staircase. It's really weird because I'm, I'm just relying on what I'm seeing on the screen because I can see, virtually see nothing else. Okay, now, one of the first things we come here in front of the um, staircase is a, this is a room. I keep looking at the corner. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why. I feel very light headed. In here? Yeah, just over here. Also, my head is very, very lightheaded and dizzy. My legs feel really, really heavy. So, what does it mean when your head feels kind of like energy? There's energy. Active. Active, yes. Oh, okay. So, nothing like 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 a residual thing, but something that, that's that's something that's definitely that's, here. That's definitely here and moving yes. around. Do you have a, a a male presence, a female presence, a a, a non-human presence? I don't know. At this point, Carrie began sensing the presence of a man. She described him as an older person and frail. However, his one distinguishing feature sent chills up my spine. He had apparently long, spindly fingers. What, what do you think are the most, is going to be the most common thing for people to experience in a place like this? Depending on the person, right. um, I suppose anyone that feels anything they will like from fear, okay. anxiety will kick in. Now, I'll probably leave this bedroom to the last because of what people are talking about. But maybe what I'll do is I'll ask you to move your head in there. Yeah. I don't know if you can see stuff around you. Would you like the lights on a little bit? Nope. Nope, you can see? Yep. It's good to hear. All right, so people might hear a little bit of voices out there. It's our team right outside. Okay. Like a lot of um, anxiety, um, like some of the hyperactive. In here? Just here. Okay. Um, fidgety. Can't stay still. Yeah. Here though. Here I've got goosebumps all over my body and it's... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, very, very heavy. It's like a very negative energy right here. Right. And this is where I feel like my legs are strapped to the ground. 
Well, in, 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 right, yeah. So they're in the same Just, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what sense do you get? Is it, you know, how come Link Strat is this meant to be a. I mean, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about the history of this house. I mean, is it meant to be like a like a hospital? Is it, are people punished? That I don't know. That I don't know. <clears throat> Make my throat burning again. Yeah, your, your throat's gone a little bit scratchy. Um, right. I don't know if it's got to do with this house. I think it's got to do with the land, this video. Oh, okay. So it's not a house based thing, it's a land based thing. That's what I'm feeling. Now, these rooms are really small. Um, still. Well, these rooms feel quite, quite pleasant, cozy even. But then again, it's easy to breathe. Yeah, and it is, isn't it? There's, yeah. there's a freshness to this room. It's yeah. really strange. Yes, that's because there's so much negativity in that room, and that's why it gets hard to breathe. Um, this one is fresher. Okay. Okay. Right. And look, uh, so this, it, this, this place here is just negative. In and how about that room over there? That's ominous. Yeah. In here, I've got a pain in the back of my neck. Okay. You, you, you touch the walls a lot. What, what is that about? I'm trying to feel the energy. In the place. Sometimes I get um, pulled to something yeah. and because there might be a connection within that wall. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that bit works. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it, it's, um, I'll get a feeling of the person or what they've been through. Okay. We were soon about to head towards a room that, earlier on in the day, I had walked in and which gave me serious chills. This next room was also the room that I had decided to sleep in overnight. It was the only place in the entire building which made me feel uncomfortable. And, later on that night, I seriously questioned my decision to choose it over all the other rooms. Here it feels like there's a blockage. A blockage. It's like something does not want me to move forward. Further into the room? Yes, yes. Um, here it's very unsteady. Where you're at? Right here. It's very unsteady. It feels sickly. Why are you saying that? Because that's the that's the bed that I've chosen to sleep <laughs> tonight. It's not the bed, it's this spot right here. Right here? Right here. Okay. It's, um, it makes me feel sick to the stomach. Right. Sickness. Right. Maybe this is where they all came when um, 
they went through it slightly. And I can imagine, like, because if you have a look there, there, there's this kind of window, right? And the windows with, with kind of blurbs that could be open and lets in fresh air. Yeah. So this might be the you know the part of the place where people come to convalesce, you know, just to, to, to rest and get better. Yeah. Um, wow, okay. Well, myself and Paul intend to spend the night in this room here. What do you think could be what we would experience when we would sleep in here tonight? Something active or just, just the energy? Honestly, I would have a camera on one of you all night. Yeah, okay. Not in a negative way, but it, it's like um, in my head I, I see like a, a child trying to wake one of you. Not, not in a bad way, <laughs> not in a bad way, but it's like, um, like if they're trying to wake you to let you know something is wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it lost? Is it, is it something to be sad about? I think it's more to let someone know that somebody's not well. And I think that that's what I'm, I'm feeling. That's what I'm picking up. Um, is that they're, they're, the child, the children are in here trying to help each other mm. and trying to let the older people know that there's something wrong, that they need help, that they're not getting the help. Right. Yeah, we, we intend to put a camera at that corner over there, mm -hmm. like near the windows, and have it kind of on us. So I think that that's what we're going to be doing tonight, yeah. just to see what happens. But okay, yeah, I think enough of this creepy house. I'm, I think we should make a walk downstairs. <laughs> Um, I'm, you, you, you're welcome to kind of put your hand on my shoulder if you need some guidance because I cannot see a single thing other than my screen. No, I can see. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. I'm going to go really slowly. And it's, it's, it's really interesting. Like, the feeling in here comes and goes. Yeah, it does. And it's um, nothing that's just kind of persistent. The first four or five stairs, let's go now, be yeah. careful. It is the one the energy on that small. The first four or five stairs. had been an interesting walk through with Kerry. Her personal insights certainly gave me another perspective to this weird and creepy house. Foremost on my mind as we traversed back to our starting point was my upcoming sleep in that strange room upstairs where she had sensed the presence of children. Although I had been brave and unconcerned earlier in the day, now that night had descended upon me. I felt a creeping sense of foreboding and unease, despite leaving the confines of the house. Jesus, I hope this doesn't lock. Oh, it's not locked. Thank you. Thank you very much. That night, I filmed myself sleeping. In the editing process, I went over five hours of footage. Physically, nothing moved in the room except myself, and even then, it looked like I'd entered a deep and restful sleep. However, at 4am in the morning, the shotgun microphone picked up what appeared to be a phone alarm going off. This alarm carried on for about 10 minutes and sounded somewhat muted. At around the same time, Alison, another member of our team who was on the second floor with me, woke up and went to the toilet. She later confirmed that she had heard this alarm at the same time, however, could not identify where it was coming from. After a check with the team, everyone confirmed that their alarms were set for much later in the morning. A check on my own phone revealed that my alarm had been set for 7.30am. As I was investigating this, Carrie's words rose unbidden in my mind. It's like, um, in my head, I, I see like a, a child trying to wake one of you. Could this have been the spirit of a child manipulating an electronic device? In an attempt to wake one of us up, the sound of that ringing was too soft for me to include it here. But that was not the end of things. A few hours prior to my walkthrough with Kerry, the team and I had explored a number of other cabins on the property. What greeted us was spine tingling, but not for the reasons you might suspect. 
Rather, we were confronted with what could have been horrible living conditions of the children brought over to Western Australia. We walked through a room filled with double bunk beds and holes in the walls and ceilings. I could not but help think what winter would have been like, the bitter cold and the biting wind. On a night that I was busy in post-production, Erica, a friend and member of our team, messaged us. She had apparently caught something on her phone which she could not explain, and, to be honest, the team and I were at a loss too. What could it have been? A reflection of the light on a reflective object? An errant insect? I'll let you be the judge. Who knows the truth behind our experiences that night? As I am always fond of saying, there are always more questions than there are answers. Good night, and try to have an undisturbed night.